call the alarm company real quick because uh, we pulled the alarm floats out of the lift station and uh, if I didn't call them, they were gonna call me. So the system's on test while we do our work. Welcome to the Wastewater Enthusiast. It's been a great week doing all sorts of process adjustments at the plant, some preventative maintenance, a little bit of reactive maintenance, some project planning for upcoming large projects we're doing at the plant and in the collection system this upcoming year. And on that note, you saw some pretty heavy equipment at the beginning of this video. That is what's called a VATCON. We had the collection cleaning crew out cleaning our sewer collection system, which is a network of gravity and pressurized sewer lines, sewer pipes that bring the sewage to us. We need those pipes clear. We need them clean, relatively clean, not clean like anything you'd have in your kitchen, but clear of obstructions and clear of buildup. We want that stuff out of there. So what you were looking at us doing at the very beginning of this video was cleaning out the influent lift station to the treatment plant. And, you know, while we were doing that, I got really excited about today's project. I was watching all this water come by and I thought to myself, what a great place to start a wastewater treatment plant operator tutorial channel. But what is wastewater anyway? It's a lot of water, but what else is in there? So today we're gonna do a little bit of an experiment. We're gonna check out some water math and we're gonna peel back some layers of the onion and explore exactly what wastewater is in the first place. Let's check it out. There are a few different types of wastewater, municipal, industrial, and agricultural. We're focused mostly on municipal wastewater here, which is the things that you flush down the toilet and send down your drains at your house. Whereas it's mostly water, the 0.1% of organic matter in the wastewater is highly volatile and exerts an oxygen demand on the environment. It is our job to stabilize it and make sure it is safe before it's discharged into the environment. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like coming into the plant and leaving the plant. Okay, so what you see behind me are called Imhoff cones. They are used to see what your settleable solids are. I am using them today to see the effectiveness on a visual basis of my raw influent versus my finished effluent. So those are two terms you need to know for your exam. Influent is what's coming in, effluent is what's going out. Quick sidebar, final effluent is what you're going to see here. It is the plant effluent but you can have effluent in between processes. We'll get more into that as we get into the individual processes, but effluent means leaving, okay? So this is my final effluent that you're gonna see. It is what is leaving the plant, okay? So influent, effluent. Now, we test for all sorts of stuff in wastewater, but the primary treatment parameter we look for is called BOD, biochemical, oxygen demand. Equally as important as TSS, but for the sake of this conversation, I wanna tell you why I do this. The BOD test is a five day test. So thinking about that, I'm not gonna know for five days if there's a problem with my treatment process. That's not something that makes me feel very comfortable as an operator. So what I like to do here is I know what my finished effluent looks like. I've been doing this long enough that if I get a certain Merck to my effluent, if it looks off in any way, I'm gonna know there's a problem and I don't have to wait five days. Those samples will certainly go to the lab. I'm gonna find out what it is, but in the meantime, I can get working on it right away, okay? So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna pour the raw and the finish and you're gonna see a big difference. One sec. That's a pretty big difference, right? Okay, so if we zoom in on these, you're gonna see a lot of suspended solids in here. And if we sat here long enough, you would start to see them fall. And you'll see settleable solids fall, suspended solids stay suspended, and that moves on to the next treatment process. But that's a conversation for a different video when we get into primary clarification, okay? But first I wanna bring this up to you before we go to the next segment. 
and show you, look how murky that is, all right? This is your raw. You're gonna notice something about that. It is 99.9% .9 water, okay? That's, people don't know that about wastewater. People think it's a bunch of chunky poop coming down the pipes. It's not the case. Sure, that stuff's in there, but you also do laundry, you do showering, uh, you wash dishes, you do all sorts of other stuff. It is mostly water coming to the treatment plant. Um, and before we get into that map, I actually wanna show you a little close up of the finished water. And that's looking pretty nice, very clear. And any cloudiness you see in that is, is mostly the water staining on my plastic Imhoff comb. It, they get kind of from the hard water, you know, you clean them with hydro, um, I use a hydrochloric acid solution, but it etches it and over time they get murky. But that is a really high quality effluent. So let's talk about that 99.9% .9 water thing. How do we get that number? Well, to understand it a little bit better, come with me to the whiteboard. Okay, let's talk about the math of the 99.9%. .9 so this is a number you are going to want to know for the entirety of your career. 1% equals 10,000 parts per million. Where do we get that number? 1% of a million is 10,000, okay? And I'm going to just say this right now, one part per million equals one milligram per liter. Just file that away. For the purpose of our math and wastewater, those two are the exact same. You're gonna to need to know that for the exams, but just file that away, know that they're interchangeable. Okay, back to the 1% equals 10,000 parts per million thing. So in my municipal wastewater and standard municipal wastewater, it is not unusual to see total suspended solids or TSS at 300 parts per million. It is also not unusual to see total dissolved solids or TDS at 700 parts per million. Give or take a few hundred here and there. It just really depends on your influent. No one influent is the same, but this is pretty safe to assume. Okay, so what's 300 plus 700? It's 1,000 parts per million of total solids. Total solids are the total suspended solids plus the total dissolved solids, okay? So, that is all of the solids in the wastewater is 1,000 parts per million. Well, if 1% is 10,000 parts per million, then 1,000 parts per million is 0.1% total solids. So 100 minus 0.1% is 99.9%. .9 so if it's not solid, it's gotta be a liquid. So that is where we say that 99.9% .9 of wastewater is water, okay? So watch this a few times, try to wrap your head around it. If that totally went over your head, you are in the right place. If you need me to explain it differently, please put that in the comments below, and I will try to reword this, but this is about as basic as it gets, okay? While we're on the whiteboard, two major constituents that we look for in every single wastewater treatment process. Some plants don't disinfect, some plants do, some plants don't nitrify and denitrify, some plants do, but every wastewater treatment plant that I know of looks at BOD and TSS, biochemical oxygen demand and total suspended solids. Why are these important? BOD is what it takes for the natural bacteria to consume the waste. It is the oxygen demand exerted on the environment, okay? So this is how lakes die, is the dissolved oxygen in the water gets sucked up by the sewage. So it's our job to knock that BOD down. We're gonna get more into that in the treatment process. TSS, total suspended solids. Often these are volatile solids, so we have to reduce those as well. They have a, they have a strong correlation with BOD. So if you can get those down, by definition, you're gonna get that down as well. Not 100% of the time, but most of the time, these guys are positively correlated. If you've got BOD, you've got TSS, and the other way around. So biochemical oxygen demand and total suspended solids. Watch this over and over again. This will be very helpful to prepare you for your entry level 
wastewater treatment plant operator exams. Well, that's all I have for you today. Please, please, please review this material if you're studying for an entry level wastewater treatment plant operator exam. The terminology we went, we went over is important, as is the math. Now, if you want to know more about me and this channel, I shot a quick introductory video. It's linked below, as well as my LinkedIn profile. That's down below as well. You can check out my resume. You can go ahead and connect with me. You can message me if you have any questions. Also, comments below. You can go ahead and comment any questions you have or a topic that you'd like me to shoot a video on. Lastly, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. That helps me grow the channel and get this information out to those people who need it. So until next time, take it easy and have a good day.